Hello everybody and welcome to Undergrave. Undergrave is a run-based strategy game from Weird Dreams Studio. I hesitate to call it a roguelike because it does kind of lock off previous areas and has some progression stuff in it. I do think this game is really cool though, so... I'm lucky enough that the developers gave me a key a couple days early before launch, which is going to be on the 13th, so you'll be seeing this video on the 11th as embargo lifts. The developer says that they're having a hard time choosing between $8 and $9 as a price to sell it for, so we'll just say that it'll be under $10 uh, for this uh, video game product. Now, Weird Dream Studio kind of have a theme. They kind of have a style. They're all very mobile. All of their games are very mobility based, and they're all grid based. This is their first attempt at making a run based strategy game, and I think that it's got some neat things going for it. I really, really enjoy the tactics that it provides, and I'm gonna do a run through of the starting zone, which I've already completed. So there's some me some mechanics missing from it because I've already finished it. All that being said, I do think this game is really cool, and I do think it is worth your time and probably a look. So we're going to dive in real quick. Before we dive in, though, I'm just going to have a real quick look at the options menu. I just want to say there are two different control styles here. Now, there's myth what they call methodical, where one button to choose and the other button to use the skill. So you select the skill with a button, and then you press spacebar to use it. And then the other one is you press the button to select the skill and the button again to activate the skill. I think that methodical is easier to use, but that's just me. So we're going to dive in real quick. Now, when you launch the game for the first time uh, and go into this screen, uh, there is a big intro cutscene that happens. Um, this is kind of the, the progression that this game has. So this is the starting zone over here. Uh, that green one down in the middle there was the... Uh, zone 2. So because I've already completed the starting zone, I've completed it twice actually, um, the shops are deactivated, which I think is a weird way of doing things. I, I kind of wish that I could just play through the starting zone again on my own time and enjoy it, but the kind of the way that this game works is you go from the starting zone, and once you finish the starting zone, you unlock the harder zone, and once you finish that zone, you unlock the harder zone, etc. So that's kind of how the game does its progression. It, it, I just kind of wish it didn't lock you out of certain features from the opening zones. That being said, I still really like the game's mechanics. So, uh, down at the bottom, you can see that we have three abilities. We have a, a dash, a throw, and a jump. I can throw my sword, I can dash, and I can jump. If my sword is, say, sitting here, I can dash through it and pick it up and damage all the enemies in a line. Now, they do damage to me if they are occupy the tile next to mine. I do kind of have to applaud this game because it does a very good job of, like, avoiding my tactics um, to a point where I kind of feel like th th this game, not, it, not that it's outsmarting me in places, but it's its very clear that these little zombies that I'm fighting against do not want to be comboed in any way. So that is our dash. Uh, this right here, that if I were to use it, would I would take damage. Uh, but that, uh, that this is kind of the throw. And then I have this jump where I can vault myself, which I'll show you right here. So... Between these ver this very limited move set, you kind of have to uh, big brain your way around all of the enemies. And that little orb that was on the ground there, I can pick that up and that'll charge the two little bars beneath my uh, AP meter. Um, charging those bars, once one of them is full, if I've picked up enough of those little orbs, um, then I can press V, which will then recharge my AP in a time of need, skipping turns. So rather than it taking me having to move to recharge one AP per turn, I can just press V and recharge four and have enough to use my jump ability, basically. Or I could have two bars of it and kind of save them for a rainy day when you really need them. Another kind of neat little wrinkle in the strategy of this is if you throw your sword and actually just leave it out on the arena, when you go down to the next arena, um, it will fall down before the first turn happens and kill one of the enemies on the map or damage one of the enemies on the map. But you don't know where it's going to fall. So you kind of want to pick up your sword, but it's also a neat kind of strategical option to just leave your sword in the arena somewhere and then come back and get it. I, I think that that's kind of cool. Ooh, they actually lined up for once. Would you like that? Splite. They don't generally do that. So now we fall in again. So after the on the on the little bar at the top, you can actually see what level we're on, and the boss is the kind of little Pac-Man ghost at the end. The little diamonds are normally shops, but because I finished this area, they are no longer shops. Um, the, the 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 every every basically five maps is when you kind of start getting either more enemies or a new enemy type by the end of this zone we're gonna have uh, i think it's three different enemy types on the map at, at any given time um you really don't want to take damage 
in this game <laughs> because the it's kind of brutal in the yeah you don't need heals who needs heals anyway kind of deal um so this game doesn't like letting you heal it doesn't like letting you have any kind of uh pleasantries or niceties we're gonna jump in between here stun them both this doesn't actually take a turn to stab them and then dive up Oop, i can't so instead i'll move up next to you and smack you the two little stars above their head indicate the number of turns they have left before uh they they become unstunned so you kind of have to keep an eye on that and then we drop in again and we've got five of them on the screen these zombies I'm, i might be kind of steamrolling these guys but they're not easy to fight at least initially and I really kind of got get like handed to this game for doing a pretty good job of posing a challenging threat. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw that at you. I'm gonna dash through, pick that up. Now I'm out of AP, so I'm gonna move down, move down again, and then oh, that requires three. Uh, well, I'll just throw my sword. And this is a pretty good opportunity actually for me to show you the sword falling mechanic that I mentioned. Although this is a shop, maybe not. So now I fall down to the shop, which currently is deactivated because I finished this zone. And I'm assuming my sword is just going to fall into the next map then? Hmm. There's also some things I, I haven't fully discovered yet, like those little pillars on the sides there. Not sure what those actually do. All right, that actually fell somewhere kind of convenient for me. So I can move up and I can actually dash through and pick that up. Perfect. And there's also these two little handy orbs. I don't know if I'll be able to get that other one though. Uh, nope, because I will take damage. So instead, I'm going to throw my sword. I'm going to move down and dash through. Cut him up. Buttercup. A very, very, very satisfying combat. That's the one thing that I can really state. Uh, especially uh, along... Um, especially in relation to their previous games. Um, very, 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 very satisfying feel to the uh, gameplay here. Let's see if we can jump over here. Bonk. Uh, I think I'm just going to move over here. And dash through. Take out that guy. So if I dash over here, that's actually going to... Well, I can't because I don't have enough... Uh, points, but if I dashed through there, then they they definitely hit me. I could throw my sword though. That might put me in a weird spot. So I think we're just gonna move this way, which is a bloody shame because you know I, I I'd love to be able to take out multiples in one turn, but we do our best. Uh, can I throw that? No, I'm out of EP. I want the orb too, but I, I'm not gonna get it. Got him. All right, let's just see where the sword falls down again. Because it's kind of a neat little tactic. Drop down. They spawn in. Where's it going to hit? Okay. Ooh, wow. It dropped out two orbs. Now, this is our first new enemy type, this mouse. These mo The mouse moves uh, two tiles per turn. And something that you'll notice when you don't have your sword, uh, movement abilities are actually cheaper. So, there is that. I think. Hmm. I, hmm. I'm trying to see how, where can I move here where I don't take a hit? Because if I move there, that's, yeah, I guess up is the only place I can go to get away from this. I don't actually have the points needed to be, okay. I think we're going to jump up here, smack you, move down one, dash, ah, oh, man, I can't, all right, we move up then, oh, man, I guess this guy here was, hmm, shit, let's do that, throw the sword at you. Because hitting something in melee range doesn't actually move the term timer forward. So you kind of get a free hit if you kind of put yourself in a bad spot like that. Hmm. But on the bright side, I'm able to kill a bunch of them in one turn. Let's 
let's move over. And then just dash through you. Yeah, I find in this game when I slip up and I start taking damage, it, I just keep taking damage. Yeah, so those pillars over on the edge there, I think those probably do something. But whatever they do, I haven't unlocked it yet, so... I'm really hoping those are like difficulty modifiers or something that you unlock once you've actually finished the game. Because like I said, I've only finished the first zone. I've made it past halfway through the second zone, but... Um... Thinking we go for this one. Really want to do that, but... I think probably throwing the sword's the best course of action. Gonna just dash through, pick my sword back up, throw the sword at you. Throw the sword at you. Probably just rinse, repeat. Now you can see that I can charge uh, my action points if I need to, but I don't need to, so I'm not going to. Let's go jump into the portal again. Um. Hmm. Now we've got two mice on screen. Let's just throw our sword up there. Work towards moving up. Dash through these two. Throw the sword at you. Dash. And dash. Very, 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 very satisfying. I love it. It's the classic, you know, I, I love it when a plan comes together kind of feel. So this is our third enemy type. I'm not sure what those are supposed to be. They're like weird spider heart things. And all I know is that they're kind of gross looking. <laughs> but um, what I do know is that they take two hits to kill. Whatever the heck they're supposed to be. Let's grab my sword. Unless you jump on them, which I do have enough points to do. So they take two hits to kill unless you manage to land your face on them. I'll throw blade down there and dash through you. And we're going to move this way. Eh, maybe if I move up. Kind of hoping that they'd play along, but got him. Pretty smooth fight, I think. So the upgrades that you'd normally be getting at the shops are things like your jump goes two moves further, um, your dash costs two less AP, things like that. Hmm. Try this. Thinking I do jump and then a second jump. Because this will allow me to kill you. And okay, now I'm gonna use the charge to charge my AP and we're gonna dash through these two. So I could smack him, but I'll take damage from the guy below. Potentially. Yeah, I don't think there's anywhere I can go. If I go down, I take a hit from the one on the right. If I go up, I take a hit from the one on, or if I go up, I take a hit on, from the one on the right. If I go down, I take a hit from the one on the left. So we're gonna go down. He's gonna hit us and we're gonna smack him. Alright, so this is this guy's the only thing left. We're just gonna walk around until I have enough to jump and land on him. Get the execute. Downwards we go. Another little thing is uh, these screens are the only places in the game that you can save. Anywhere else, it, like if I were to leave right here, I would for I would have to forfeit my runs, so you can only save every four tiles. Hmm. I think we're just going to throw the sword right there. Get him on the angle. 
So something that I'm going to show you right now is you can actually jump onto your sword like this. Did that more as an example. I knew I would take damage there. Let's grab this orb. Now I wonder if I end in the same tile as this thing, if it'll kill it. This is actually me just kind of doing science here. Yeah, okay. So if, if I do a dash and I end in the same tile as them, it kills it. Otherwise, it just simply stuns them for a turn. That's kind of neat. And makes them do the little blinky damage thing. Oh, that is sneaky. Okay. We're going to jump on top of you. And I'm going to just move up this way. I'm going to dash through and take you out. We're going to just kind of kite him around. I'll have enough to do use another dash. Oh, okay. Further down we go. It's still such a satisfying combat feel. I love it. Move down. See if we can do a death from above. Death from above, bruv. I'm also kind of curious if the sword is going to kill these. Okay, no, it don't. Noted. <laughs> Today I learned. I may actually die on this. Due to poor decisions. Fortunately, I can attack multiple times in a turn and it doesn't count. Let's dash through these two. Man, <laughs> taking damage. Played this one real bad. I just kind of want to show you the boss, even if I don't kill it. So let's see if I can clear this with one HP. I will show you the next zone regardless though. Let's jump into the middle of all this crap. Let's actually just jump out of this. Zero AP. This rat's gonna hit me. I think I'm dead. Yep. Well, didn't quite make it to the boss, but I will show you the next zone. Let's just wait for the doors to open. <laughs> So because I have already finished that zone, I've unlocked the Bloodroot Garden. Which has different music and different enemy types right off the bat. So something that's kind of neat about this is because there's no, like, visual examine or anything. Uh, you're kind of locked into just kind of experimenting with the enemy types that you see to kind of figure out what they do. So I think we'll just jump onto you and see what happens. All right. Have you ever played a game with jellies before? <laughs> of course, they do exactly the thing that you would expect jellies to do. Clone themselves. You come too. Let's see if they follow me. Unfortunately, not as efficiently as I would want them to. Let's throw the sword and then dash through. On to the next zone. Try throwing the sword. Now, hmm. I think this is the best course of action here. I'm gonna try and hit both of them. Let's just throw the sword. If I jump there, that's actually probably going to hurt me. Do this. Hmm. Dash up and through. 
don't actually have enough AP to use that. It's like you have to learn different tactics to play. Yeah. That 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 them only having one turn of stun when you jump on them doesn't actually benefit you much. Alright, well. We'll see how long we last. Let's see if we can get to a shop so I can show you what the shops look like. Let's just cut through you. Cut through again. At least I get the a good amount of AP charge off these. Cut through you so I don't end up in trouble. Let's go this way. I really want to grab that orb, but it's not going to happen, is it? Let's throw a sword. Let's wait for that. Do the jump. Do the stab. Move up, I think. See if I can get them to line up. This AI has so much self-preservation, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I kind of love it. All right. You know, let's actually just let the sword fall this time. See where it lands. We got plenty of HP to make it to the first shop. Let's see where it comes down. Okay. Jump up here and get the stun in. Dash down through here, take him out. Same with that. Pick up this orb. Get the death from above on him. Don't have any AP. <laughs> Should be able to do this though, I think. Perfect. That's what we wanted to see. So I guess throw sword dash is maybe the strat for these guys. Yeah, because they seem to spawn there and then one behind it, which makes them super easy to just dash through. Sweet. Onto the storefront. Excellent. So this is what the shops look like. You kind of walk up to these and you press space. And then you get kind of these little blood pools. Confusion. Enemies are stunned for three turns upon appearing. Ooh. I'm gonna try that, because that's new. Never seen that before. The other ones were basically, I can do damage without my sword. And then the last one was, abilities are cheaper. But We've got red jellies. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm actually just going to jump up here. Curious as to why that green jelly on the left was going down there. Move over here. Interesting, only one jelly spawned there. I guess I double killed that one because I pressed it up against the wall. Kind of a different strat. Let's kill you. And I'm thinking, I'll move this way. Hmm. I don't like this, <laughs> but. Hmm. Huh. Could throw my sword. But I'm not certain that that benefit. Well, actually, no, that does benefit me, because then I can do this. After I punch you. Oh, shit! If you punch things into your sword... Well, oh, that's cool. Still don't have anywhere I can move to, though. So I'm going to take the hit regardless, but that's that's a neat little thing, the fact that I can punch things into my sword. I had no idea that that worked that way. I still keep discovering little mechanics. I really, really, really like this game. It's cool. Like, I'm dying here, but I'm I'm totally fine with this death because I'm I'm feeling like I'm learning interesting things. 
That's Undergrave, everybody. Cool little game. Awesome little run-based tactics game. Easy recommendation at the cheap price that it's available for. Check this game out. And if you want to see more videos like this from me, check out this YouTube channel. I got tons of videos, as well as more Dwarf Fortress than you could ever reasonably watch in a lifetime. If you want to support this video directly or you want to support me, you can do that via patreon.com slash blindirl or super thanks via a comment. Click on the little heart with a dollar sign in it. If you want to check this game out, links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm blind, and I'll see you in the next one.